Hey, what's up everyone? Mark Croson here from the Performance Lab of California, and we have another new breakdown for you today on Abdul Hakim Sonny Brown. We've actually done a breakdown on uh, Sonny Brown here a couple years ago, uh, but we wanted to go ahead and get an updated one just because now he's in college here, he's run, running for Florida, and here he is in the SEC Championship. So he's actually this person right here. Sorry for the not great arrow, but... Um, yeah, so he's this this athlete, so we'll go ahead and hop right into the breakdown. So big thing that we're seeing here in the initial movement is, you know, he just does an excellent job. So the, the interesting thing about Sonny Brown is he's six foot three. And even though he's six foot three, he still has such a good start. He still has a really, really good job of being able to take off. Uh, and, and I think that's one of you know, the big strengths and, and the reasons why he, he is able to have so much success as a sprinter because, you know, a lot of times the taller the, the sprinters, the, the harder it is for them to get going. So when you're a little bit taller and you have a, a really good start, it really gives you a big advantage once you get into the top end speed. So, you know, when he, when he gets his start going, he just does such a great job maintaining a really um, elongated spine angle, right? He doesn't lean over too much here. But he also does a great job of keeping his chest up over his body so he doesn't end up standing up too much either, right? So it wants to be a combination of being able to keep yourself as long as you can going that way, um, but then also keeping yourself more down and making it so you're able to, you know, keep your chest out in front of you. Because a lot of times what happens when, when you bend down, bend over here, the, the spine ends up rounding. So you got to have the, the core stability and the core strength to be able to, you know, really create that length through the spine, but not the, the bend and, and losing the posture. You can see here a little bit more of a loss of posture in comparison to uh, Sonny Brown. So, you know, he's going out here. I think he does an excellent job of, of starting. Lands really, really high up on those toes. So he's able to get really, really quick, which is a key part of his, you know, excellent starts. You could also really tell how much of, of a reach that he gets. He has great extension within the shoulders and really allows his arms to be able to get back. I think in the, in the, especially in the start, your ability to have great shoulder range of motion is super, super important because now you're able to really get that extension through, you know, your lats and, and through your shoulders, which also correlates into getting a little bit more extension through your hips as well. So the better you're able to extend through the shoulders, the better you're able to extend through, you know, the hips. So th those two correlate with each other and they, they help each other out. So, you know, now he's getting going and, and he's really doing a good job of getting those, those legs up. Uh, and, and the big thing with him is you just get such great extension with his leg out in front of him. As, as he's transitioning through, right? So he gets already, he's getting basically a fully straight leg as he's transitioning through. It looks like, you know, his left leg is a lot more of his power leg and his right leg is a, lot, a little bit more of his speed leg here um, when, when watching a run. Everybody's a little bit different with, you know, which leg's more of their, their speed or turnover leg, which one's more of their power leg. Um, the reason I say that is just because it doesn't look like he has as much flexibility in the left one, uh, which generally means that, that it, it could end up being your power one. Um, which, which in comparison to the right one where he has a lot better range all the way through there. So he gets that nice extension there and then he's able to cycle that leg through a little bit more effectively. Again, and then from here, you can see the difference in how the actual extension in the arm is. So before he had a lot more, um, the, the arm was a, a lot more straight as he was going back. Now he's getting a lot more just pure extension, keeping those elbows bent as he's going back. And you also see, I know a lot of people talk about, you know, keeping a more relaxed face or some guys that have more of a relaxed face when they're running. There are some people that don't have as much of a relaxed face as they're running. Uh, so we can see here that he does a good job of, or, or he's somebody that, that is not super relaxed, at least in the face, as he's going, right? So so I don't necessarily think that that is a correlation, right? Somebody like Noah Lyles, he's very, very relaxed in the face, and, and I think that helps him in a positive way. But, you know, we got Sonny Brown here. I also know Justin Gatlin. Both those guys are very, very tense in their face as they're running. Um, and so there's not like a, a definite thing that you have to do within your face in order to, you know, run faster. All right, big thing, though, that, that you're seeing is he's doing a great job. As soon as he's getting that leg out, out in front of him, he gets a lot of extension right out in front of him, um, and, and he gets a big turn in his shoulders, right? So he really, especially on this side, he really turns that left shoulder around and then gets that pull down. Right side, he doesn't have as much of a turn, but definitely on the left side, and you could really see that when you're seeing him run full speed and how he has a little bit of a, of a different run because of you know how he twists, but it also makes it so you could really tell how much he really extends out in front and reaches out in front with his legs, right? There's other guys that are just not getting the same type of reach, and, and I think you know that's where it really helps him to be that extra the six three is that he can really take up a lot of space on each one of his steps, and he really gets a really good knee drive as he's going through, which which is a, a big benefit for him. Now he's 
kind of gets caught here at the end, and, and, and in my opinion, just because he probably needs to get a little bit more strength in his actual push-off, right? He's not extending as far back. We just watched a Tyson Gay breakdown recently where he does a really, really good job pushing off, um, and, and he does a good job with, with front mechanics as well. Tyson Gay is obviously one of the best sprinters in the world, um, but, you know, one of the big separators that I'm seeing here is that Tyson Gay does a much better job being able to extend and push off, where Sonny Brown, it gets a little bit more of just like a super fast turnover, which is also important. I don't want to make it limit, limit the importance of that, um, but you have to have that fast turnover and also have that power production in order to, you know, really have that um, elite top end speed like, you know, somebody like Tyson Gay does, not to obviously say that Sonny Brown doesn't. He ended up running uh, a sub 10 here, uh, which is definitely elite top speed. But, you know, just giving a comparison between, um, you know, Tyson Gay and, you know, Sonny Brown. So, you know, I think that there's some some areas that, that Sonny Brown it really can continue to uh, exploit and improve on that will really make it so he ends up being a, a continually better sprinter um, and, and, you know, has a, a great chance, I think, to having some a, a great Olympic career uh, as he continues to get stronger and, and gets a little bit better with creating that force force off the ground um, once he gets into that top end speed. But his start it is just so good, especially for, for his size. Um, so as, as he continues to build off of that, I really see him being a uh, top sprinter. And, and he might have like pulled something or something like that during this actual run as well, because at the end he was really grimacing a lot. So, you know, that could be impacting the, the top end speed as well. But um, without further ado, though, that's, that's the breakdown for today. We just did release a 40-yard dash. Uh, breakdown and I'm going to do a 40 yard dash video as well today. Um, so if you guys are interested in getting that for free, then I would go ahead and check that out. It's a, it's a seven day trial um, for for the program. And then after you do the seven days then you can upgrade it into getting the, the full 12 week program. But, um, you know, big thing is just trying it out. We're trying to help as many people get faster. We're trying to make it pretty much 100 percent of a you know program that that doesn't need equipment. Um, or the equipment that you do need, you could actually just, you know, we'll just include it in the program as well. So, um, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing some big improvements in speed within that program. And if you have any questions, you could always reach out to me and we'll talk soon.